in baseball meeting for a uh, powwow to decide if we're going to start the season on time. We have Ron Manfred and then Tony Clark, and we have a whole bunch of people that are making a lot of more money to decide what's going on with the CBA. And guess what? Nothing happened. Did you really expect something to happen today? I did not. Brett did. We'll talk about this and more on this episode of the Locked On Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram at Astros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. All right. Thank you for making us your first listen every day, whether it's on YouTube. I hope that you have subscribed to us already. If you haven't, go ahead and do that right now and make sure that you listen and watch our every episode and give us a like and go ahead and listen to us on your way to work, on your way home from work. So I guess the big story today is what happened in that meeting today. And the pos- the players were not very positive about the outcome. And uh, it seems like the owners are still here. And the players are still kind of here, and it just seems like there's no, they're nowhere closer. And I, I believe in Jake Kaplan's article today, he said that it's no longer a, um, a, a, a question of if the season's going to start on time, but it's just like, it's just like when is it going to start? So it's just there's a lot of question marks out there right now, and it's getting a little scary. Yeah, it is. And the closer we get to the pitchers and catchers reporting. Um, I believe in February, the the more unlikely it is that, that that the spring training will start on time. Now, I think even if spring training is delayed by a week or two, that you still see a baseball, a full baseball season. The, the, the owners can ill afford to miss any games because of 2020, and we've talked about that at nauseum. I want to pause right here on the baseball talk before we get into it, and I want to send a shout out, Eric, to my team tonight. I told them I would do this. Um, my girls basketball team tonight um played another undefeated team we were the only two teams in district left undefeated and we beat them tonight we're six and oh we're trying to make it an undefeated season going to the playoffs and win a district title so congratulations girls from the lady roughnecks i appreciate their effort tonight it was really fun and so that was a positive for me you know um throughout the day when you when you think about baseball right now it's it's actually really kind of depressing and i've even talked to you about how i mean i've even kind of drifted no pun intended on the on the racing pun but i've drifted to formula one and um at the end of the day i'm i'm wondering you need baseball back is what you're trying to say yes i need baseball back and I need I need these guys to come together and I need these guys to basically do what they're supposed to do because um, now I am under no illusion that they were going to solve everything today. But why are you even going to meet? That's my point. Why are you even? Well, you've got to start the conversation somewhere. You've got to you got to get this. This it's been forty three days since they had their last meeting, so you have to start somewhere. I mean, if you're going to ask a girl out, you've got to, you've got to get the process going. You can't just avoid that. You can't just like, if you see her walking down the hallway, you can't just uh, avoid them every time you've got to make the initial contact. And that's what this is. It's the initial contact. Sorry. Yes. Apparently I'm, <laughs> you're like, man, you're like your arms McGee, like me the other day. Um, so, um, Arlie basically says if they prolong this till spring training, what happens with the free agents? He's asking. Free, uh, I mean, you'll see something are... like like a few years ago where you have the um, like I believe it was what's the mega uh, agent guy? Um, I can't you think. Come about Scott name. Boris. Yeah, Scott Boris. He he created a whole spring training site of his own for the free agents, and they just kind of warm up there. And so you might see uh, uh, like all the free agents kind of. Um, start there until they get signed something like that yeah no yeah and it's it, it's just going to be a frustrating process and i i think maybe after this show i mean obviously until something comes out 
it's not something that we're just going to sit on. And this is all we're going to talk about because we've got plenty to talk about things we haven't even hit on. Um, and something we'll talk about later on the show with a rising star in the Astros organization, um, just continuing to uh, turn heads and do amazing things at the plate. But at the end of the day, you have to wonder, Eric, how much are the players willing to compromise their deal? Because the owners very much feel like the ball is in their court. But like I said before, I think the ball is more in the players' court because the owners, more than the players, need those games, need that revenue. Um, Because the players have the contract, so they have to get paid. Um, The only way they can pay them is if they're getting receipts at the gate. So what does that mean for this year? If... If they if they lose spring training games, I don't think they lose that much money in spring training. But if they lose regular season games, you're talking about a ton of money. Even if you lose five games, I don't know what the calculation is, but it would not be. I mean, across the league, it would be a huge loss. Yeah, but you also, um, if you have spring training loss, you're going to push that into the regular season. Then you're going to have uh, players not ready. We already already coming off a season where starters didn't go really deep in the game. Coming off a season where starters only pitched what into sixty games, so it's already going to put them behind eight ball. So it's just it is a big deal. So spring training, especially a shortened spring training, will not be good for baseball. And so it just, it's not good. So this is, uh, it's just not very good that nothing's going forward and no follow-up bargaining has uh, been scheduled. And it just doesn't seem like they're, they're even close to a deal. And so there's been a, the MLB, the owners have kind of come back down on some things and they did make some changes. And one of the things was that they said, you know what? Okay, y'all keep on worrying about the sat the super two salaries, the stuff. So I got you. I got you. This is what we got. We're gonna eliminate the salary t- uh, the salary arbitration process for super two players. And this is only a small group. This is the uh, George Bringers and you know the the and like Jordan Alvarez, the the guys who are no the Chris Bryant's actually the ones right. who come up a little bit earlier, and so they meet that criteria and uh, they're good enough to do that. And uh, so they said that we're uh, MLB offered to pay those players instead of um, instead based on a formula while maintaining the current arbitration process for those players, three to five years of service time. So they're, they're kind of getting rid of that uh, whole super two rule sort of. And so they're trying to, to find a way, but here's the issue. The players want um, they're tired of the whole um, the whole service time manipulation. Oh yeah, and- definitely. That's yeah, that's that's something that that the owners have really taken advantage of. Um, you know, I mean, we've we've seen it here in Houston with guys like George Springer. Um and really at the end of the day, it is a shame that some of these players don't get to be released and do what they want um because they are at a disadvantage the older they get, right? They may have their peak years. And some of these contracts are really based on what you've done, not what you can do. And maybe the shift needs to change with the owners. Like, let's pay you for what you can do at 24 and what you will do from 24 to 30 versus what you did do. And now we got you on these later years. Um, Hey, just a just a quick pause in my comments. David, uh, David Ott asked, what hat are you rocking tonight? This is the 20th anniversary Round Rock Express hat when the Astros were still with the Round Rock Express. So that's what I am wearing. It's a, I don't, it's some, I don't know if it's a dust cloud. I thought it was a saber tooth tiger because I couldn't make out what it was. It's something to do with the Round Rock name, rock with some, some rock in Round Rock, Texas. Um, I don't know the history behind it, my bad. But that's what it is. 20th anniversary, AAA, uh, Round Rock Express Astros hat. All right. So, uh, yeah, the big thing that the players want is they want the, the, like I was saying, the, they don't want MLB does not want to adjust the time it takes players to reach free agency or on revenue sharing. And commissioner Rob Manfred has spoken out against changes on those fronts and MLB, uh, the players association lead negotiator, Bruce Meyer has said that MLB has said, uh, at the table, 
that would not make any changes in those areas. And the players, however, have shown a willingness to drop those requests at this point or at some point. So, but uh, it just seems like the players are willing to concede at certain things, but not right now. And the, the thing is, is uh, there's no, yes, the deadline, I mean, pitchers, catchers reporting is like about a little more than a month away. Yeah. But there's no hard deadline yet. And so it's just, it's just like there's, there's not that push. And once right. that push gets closer, that's when you'll be, you'll feel both sides feeling the pressure. I agree with you 100%. So um, Arlie Riffle asked this, if it is prolonged, meaning the lockout, do you think the free agent's asking price goes down? I think the free agent's asking price only goes down if the CBA is affected in a way where the clubs have less to spend. If it goes up and higher, that's only going to make that market even more. So with that being said, it's amazing to me to think that some of y'all out there eat protein bars. And it's not called a built bar. Why? Because in this new year, in this new you, you're out there working out. You're out there trying to get healthy because 2021, maybe your diet was wrecked. Maybe, maybe you just had a rough year. And you're like, you know, I'm going to turn it around. Well, you need to go to built bar. You need to go to built.com and check it out. This is an amazing protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. It's 100% chocolate. It's not chalky or waxy. It doesn't taste like a chemical spill. It is 100% real chocolate that it's wrapped in. Most bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar. And I won't even read it because it's embarrassing how many calories those things have. Even if you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least eat something that tastes good. You can at least snack on something that's good for you. There's many flavors to choose from. Mint brownie, salted caramel, cookies and cream, raspberry, and so much more. Built.com is the great place to go. You can get everything from built broth to built puffs to built bars. The sky's the limit. Use a promo code to LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Use a promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Tell them Locked on Astros sent you. All right. So if you're if you're looking at the playoffs, there's they still want the 14-team playoffs. Of course you do, uh, owners. You want the more money. And that the playoffs, as we've seen, is where the money comes in. We all know. We paid the playoff tickets. We bought the hoodies. And I bought two hoodies last year. And I looked at myself and like, did I really need those two hoodies? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Well, no, I, I was. Yes, I did. Dude, <laughs> did you did you buy a World Series hoodie? Yeah, I bought a World Series hoodie. Did you pay a hundred dollars for the World Series hoodie? I plead the fifth. Okay. Yes, I, was, I, I know. I know what you're gonna say, and I, no, I'm kicking myself for it. No, I was gonna buy one. Uh-huh. <laughs> I wanted something for the World Series. I settled for the game program. <laughs> I was not going to pay $100. I looked at the guy and goes, that's ridiculous. He goes, I agree. <laughs> I was shocked like, like because it was my first World Series game experience. So I right. didn't know. I knew the prices would be inflated, but good Lord, those same hoodies at Academy were about well, $35 that's where I got, recently. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. I know. Okay. I wish I waited. And I oh, my yeah, father, no. My, that's what you got to do. Yeah, I bought my uh, father one, and I gave him one for Christmas. And I'm like, oh, I wish I would have waited, but at the same time, it's all good. Hey, you know what? Though, here's the thing, man. It was it was the experience. You bought it, you know, while you were there, while we we're in the heat of the moment. So, hey, I don't think any any fan in the right mind could fault you for that. I definitely don't, Eric. I think you're a great guy. Um, you know, I don't care what Jay Roberts says, but you know, I'm joking. Um, Jay Roberts asked this question. The reason why I said that is his question popped up here. Do the robocalls or the ump issues come up during these talks, or is that a at another time? I don't know another that time. this. I yeah, I don't. <laughs> That's think not a CBA. CBA yeah, this yeah, this CBA is going to be all about how much of the pie the owners are going to give up to the players, service time, how they evaluate players. Are the are the owners going to throw in this crazy thing where they're going to take someone's war and use it against them? Um, I mean. There are so many things that are on the table. Now, I do think that you see the DH inserted into the National League this year. I think that happens. Um, I also think the banning of the shift comes in, and that happens as well. Um, so it's just one of those things, Eric, where right now the it's you just really don't know like what's going to happen exactly because we don't know where we're going to be, when we're going to be there, but you couldn't have said it more correctly earlier when you said the closer it gets to the date of 
the of the pitchers and catchers, you know, getting together in spring training, the more urgent both sides are going to become. It's really who blinks first in this. I mean, this isn't a good old standoff. Like they're both going to draw, and it's like someone's got to pull the trigger. Someone's got to pull the trigger and say, "Okay, we're going to let this go, or we're going to let that go." And right. billionaires versus millionaires is the classic American capitalistic fight. Yeah, for example, they're agreeing to pay players six hundred to seven hundred thousand minimum salary. So and uh, escalating at some point to seven hundred and seventy-five thousand to eight hundred seventy-five thousand. So they're they're giving in at certain things, but it seems like the going to free agency just like is what they're they're they they really want to avoid giving up that extra year of free agency because why? That's worth millions of millions of dollars, and teams do not want to do that. And it just, it's just crazy to think about that. And also, um, uh, they're also trying to kind of reward you for bringing up players early. So if you uh, bring up your player early, so let's say you bring up um, Jeremy Pena early and he becomes the rookie of the year, then you can get an extra draft pick if, from what I understand. Yeah, no, and you know, um, here's something else, and this is this is an excellent point. Um, the 14 team playoff was what the MLB proposed. I believe the I believe the players wanted 12 teams. Um, that would be another answer to the competitive balance issue. Now, Michael says that he thinks it would diminish the value of playoff baseball, but in the owner's eyes, it actually for them increases the value of their club because I mean, think about if we had an expanded playoffs last year the Blue Jays and the Mariners make it in. Um, I don't know about the National League who was on the cusp. I just don't know off the top of my head. I probably should, but I don't. I don't know everything, even though my name is H-Town Wheelhouse, and you would think I would. But, at, you know, and you're Eric the Man Heisman, but we don't know it all, right? Um, the bottom line is this. He's like, wait, I do. The bottom line is this. I think the league would be at a huge advantage to have more playoff teams. I don't know 14 is maybe a bit much. Um, I kind of am starting to fall in love with the idea of of a team picking their opponent. I think that's actually kind of cool, kind of um, especially if you have someone that's a rival or you have a team that picks someone that they think they have the clear advantage on and the team that gets picked beats the team that picked uh, them. Be careful who, what you wish for, because if you if you uh, pick this team, they end up beating you. Then you're I mean, going to be kicking I'm... your butt. Exactly. Be... No, no. And that's that's exactly my point. Um, at the end of the day, it comes down to who has the amount of money that they want. Um, these owners are making money hand over fist. Most of them are billionaires. They're not all Steve Cohen, okay? But Steve Cohen is four times richer than the second richest owner in Major League Baseball. Um, I don't even know where Crane is on the list, but these men know how to move their money. These, these clubs know how to get the most out of what they have. And that's why if I had to side with one or the other, I would side with the Major League Baseball Players Association in this negotiation process. Yeah. Um, and I, I see that uh, Diot uh, says that maybe shorten the season and add more playoff teams and maybe add more playoff games because that's where the money is. But I think that you're not going to see that you're not going to see them because then that goes back to the whole of um, like taking away from the stats and you can't compare what uh, the players have done in past. And I, I don't think that, that you're going to see baseball shortening the season. I know that football has um, added the extra game. Now it's 17 games um, if I'm correct, but I don't think you're going to see baseball going away from that. They're such a tr traditional team. Now that they're yeah. 162, it would just it would diminish everything if they go away from that. I mean, I know what do y'all do with the Dodgers and the 2020 season with the 60 games? What do y'all call that? Yeah, a Mickey Mouse championship. So uh, I I just don't think that you're uh, they're gonna go away from. That. I, I hear what you're saying though, but um, one of the things also um, going back to. Um, the uh, luxury tax threshold, they are still proposing a slight raise from the 210 th uh, million that they have now to 214 million. 
And then from there, they're going to eventually go to 220 million, but the players want more. Yeah, no, they do. Um, Here's, here's, here's something to think about. Um, I know that um, Larry, the GM has been writing on all these different proposals um, of what the baseball could do. And he's talking about two expansion teams. I know other places they've mentioned expansion teams in 2024. And so Jay Roberts, a uh, you know, faithful listener to the show, um, he says, hey, what cities are out there that might have the next franchise? Well, I'll tell you this. It's not an expansion franchise, but I really think I see Oakland going to Las Vegas. Um, if Oakland stays in Oakland, I see Las Vegas getting a baseball team. I think with the success of their football team and that stadium and that town, there's so much money in Vegas. Why wouldn't you have? I mean, I'm surprised there's not an NBA team because they do all the summer league stuff there. Um, Portland, believe it or not, um, is is a possibility because Russell Wilson is an owner in a sports group that is trying to put together a team that would see Portland, Oregon, um, have a baseball team, and that is backed by um, Russell Wilson and Sierra Wilson. They they have they're like I don't know if they're majority owners in this group, but I've seen that bantered about. So you have Portland. If Oakland stays there, you have Vegas. Those are the two cities. Eric, I don't know off the top of my head what other cities there would be out there that would that would be able to host. I would a team love San Charlotte. Antonio. But. San San Antonio, but do is it a big enough market? I mean, I don't know. San Antonio, I, I, I don't could. know. It, it's hard to I, bet on where you're going to put a new team. True. It's just kind of like I uh, wonder what BetOnline.ag would say. Yeah, so Bet Online is the best and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. It's a new betting year, and they remain the number one spot for all sports wagering for 2022. It's a new year. This new updated desktop and mobile website is great and easy for you to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use your promo code Locked On to get started. From football, baseball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. I'm just seeing this note. You know what the players want the luxury tax star sold to be? What's that? Two hundred and forty-five million. Of course you do. You want the money. You want those big time salaries. Of course you do. Player. I mean, well, yeah. Of course they do. Look at what they're making right now. I mean. I mean, you know, he, here's the thing, and, and, and just just to take an Astros spin on this, if you sign Carlos Correa, if you do get Crane to bend and break, you will not be able to sign Jordan or Tucker. Tucker will be getting a three hundred plus million dollar deal easily. T- um, Jordan Alvarez, I don't know what he would command, but he would command a rather large salary, especially if he stays healthy. Those two guys are keys to your future. I think keeping Jordan is a massive, massive concentration that you need to focus on because Yuli is nearing his retirement. The Astros, I just covered last last podcast, how they've got these two young 19 and 16-year-old Cuban studs that they're signing in like two days, January 15th. You're listening on the 14th. One more day, they'll be signing them. And they are really doing a great job um, just basically using Cuba as their farm system. So um, Carlos, I think, Eric, unless he comes down on his price in his years, I, I just I don't I don't see him signing here unless the Astros do a super big deal for two years. And then you still have room at the end of those two years to go and get, you know, Kyle Tucker and Jordan right. Alvarez, because that's when they're they're up after those two years. Hey, uh, Brett, I've got to take off, but you know what? Yeah. I think we want to hear about Jeremy Pena and what's going on with him. So can you go ahead and talk a little bit about Jeremy Pena and what he's doing? Because I hear he's crushing. Yeah, definitely. Hey, guys, um, thanks for staying tuned in to Locked on Astros. We are your team every day. And make us your first listen. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. If you're watching, please hit the like button and make sure that you share with two or three f- friends this week about Locked on Astros. Because in this off season, we know it's tough to sit here and talk about baseball, but we find ways to get around the lockout blues. We find ways to make sure that you're up and you're up to speed with all things Houston Astros. So let's talk about Jerry Pena. Now, before I talk about Jeremy Pena, let me, let me lay the groundwork for this. And I'll spend about four or five minutes on this. Number one, Jeremy Pena is not Carlos Correa, okay? Number two, 
you are not going to replace Carlos Correa with a Carlos Correa caliber player. Okay, let's just get that out of the way. And number three, Alex Bregman is not moving to shortstop. Stop suggesting it. It's not going to happen. It's a bad move. It's bad for his career. It's bad for the Astros. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Just don't just stop talking about it. So now that we got those things out of the way and our foundation laid about Jeremy Pena, Jeremy Pena is hitting the ball. Now, I will say this, and this was pointed out to me, and I won't take credit for these stats. Um, all those stats I don't think are necessarily owned by anyone in, in, in particular. But Jeremy Pena, when you look at his stats um, recently um, from, the, from the Dominican League in all three seasons, Rob in Cyprus pointed this out to me. He said, you know, there's, he said, I see plenty to be concerned about. He basically takes all the leagues that he's played in. He's got a 773 OPS, 18 home runs, and 789 at-bats. He has 29 stolen bases and 182 games. His glove is solid, as Rob says. He is less heralded than Carlos Correa, which we all knew that. But he's hoping for what's best. And um, Clint, who is um, Clint the scout, says that he's shown the ability this season to retool his swing, find power for all fields. Defensively, he's very sound, capable of being very proficient. He's clearly motivated. He's gritty. He's spirited. And he wants to be successful. So at the end of the day, Jeremy Pena has the motivation. And, and sometimes hard work beats talent. Sometimes you don't have to have the most talented players at every single position to win. And I have never been an advocate of just saying, okay, Carlos, just walk. See you later. I want Carlos Correa to be Houston Astro. I think just like Sully from Locked On MLB has said, just like other people like Aram Layton, um, just baseball, um, gosh, Chris Castellani, who is now with Barstool Sports, who used to be Locked On Tigers, everyone I've talked to, Mike Stanton, Jeff Blum, all these people we've talked to. I mean, even Lance McCullers, um, one of Carlos's best friends. Carlos Correa seems right when he's in an Astros uniform. But the writing, I think, is on the wall. And unless Carlos Correa is willing to come down, give some sort of a hometown discount, I think, number one, if you lock him up for too many years, you ruin your chances of getting Kyle Tucker and Jordan Alvarez back when they're done. So with that said, with that out of the way, Jeremy Pena is coming. Jeremy Pena can hit. Jeremy Pena is motivated. Jeremy Pena is a high motor guy um it's almost like he it, it's almost like him and siri went to the same school of hype or the school of swag you know siri he hits those home runs look up the dominican league and look up jose siri home runs look up jeremy pena home runs and watch these kids and they really truly love the game and why wouldn't jeremy pena be motivated he hears everything now I don't know if he sits down and watches Locked On Astro and Astros and gets his like feels all about how you know how much we love him here at the show. But at the end of the day, Jeremy Pena does hear the doubters, does hear, oh, well, he's no Carlos Correa. Oh, well, you can replace Carlos Correa with him, but you're gonna have a major drop off because Jeremy Pena is no Carlos. Keep talking. I mean, the Astros feed off the hate, you know, and I really think Bregman heard a lot of people in the offseason. I think he heard people saying that um, he he had lost the eye of the tiger, that, that he just wasn't didn't didn't seem as motivated. And I don't know about you, but what I've seen from 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 Bregman makes me, if I'm an opponent, very, very fearful to face him. Um, Crane, Jim Crane is not cheap. Jim Crane. um the suggestion by some people on this show that that, that Jim Crane just won't spend money um, is an absolute as, uh, absurdity. What he's not willing to do is hamstring the future of his club for one player. Okay, we have one World Series title, and I love Carlos Correa. And again, let me make this disclaimer: I'm not saying this because I'm trying to knock Carlos Correa. But we have also lost the other World Series, and he has been on the team. It's not like Carlos Correa in 2019 crushed the game-winning home run against the Nationals. It's not like Carlos Correa came back from a 7-2 to deficit and hit a grand slam against the Braves and the Astros won. That doesn't mean that Carlos Correa isn't important. That doesn't mean that Carlos Correa isn't the best shortstop in the game. 
That's not what I'm saying. So don't get on Twitter and bash me and tell me, oh, you're wrong about Carlos Correa. But you're right. Mad Dog right here. Hard work beats talent. Jeremy Payne is motivated. I mean, why wouldn't he be motivated? Why wouldn't you give him a shot? I mean, Alemnis Diaz can be your backup when Jeremy's got a rest. I was not sold on Jeremy starting the year. Forget it. Just throw caution to the wind. Throw him in there. Baby with the bathwater, just throw it all out. You remember the two players that came up and struggled, and everybody doubted them. And probably some of y'all listening. Alex Bregman, 0 for 27 in his first 27 at-bats. Kyle Tucker, he's too lazy. He can't play. Look at him. He doesn't care. He just sloughs around. He's not a good hitter. He adjusted his swing, and he became an MVP caliber player. He will be in the MVP race. Him and Bregman both will be in the MVP race in 2022 amongst all the doubts. And another player that we're going to try to talk about more and get more info on is Forrest Whitley. Y'all have signed off on him. Y'all have said forget Forrest Whitley. I expect Forrest Whitley apology letters and Forrest Whitley apology tweets when he makes his Major League debut late in the summer. I believe he's going to be there. Now, I'm not saying he's going to come out and strike out 15 batters in one setting, but he's going to prove everybody wrong. This club has the right men, now the right women, in the right places. We have an all-star cast from the front office in, yes, Jim Crane, all the way down to the coaches, all the way down to the pitching coaches. And it is just one of those things that we have to realize. Now, um, JC says, "Would, would um, we would have won all these divisions since 2017 without Correa, 100%. Whoa, that's a, that's a lightning rod statement. <laughs> that's a lightning rod statement. But it makes sense because, see, this team is more than an individual, okay? This team is more than a player. And if you want proof that one player doesn't make the difference for a World Series more times than not, look at all the players where they've gone and they failed. Now, Justin Verlander very much had a key role in helping this team get to the World Series. I believe that firmly. But that was the exception and not the rule. And, hey, look, even Samuel and I agree on this show. I'm a believer in Forrest Whitley, he says. He will quiet the haters down. I believe you. And right here, I'm a Whitley fan, but I do think Jaco needs to go. Huh. Interesting. So there's so many things, guys and girls, that we can look at this offseason. Don't focus on the negative. Like I always say, always positive, always strows. Just realize that we're here for you all offseason, whether the lockout is extended or whether it stops. I mean, there's a certain time we're going to pick up back to five shows again. We're still grinding. Um, I'm just going to ask you all to just keep sending positive thoughts our way trying so hard to nail down um, interviews from from outside of our reach, just really expanding our reach. And we've got some things that are, I mean, we're we're right on the cusp of, of having some great, great interviews. I don't want to spill the beans of who they are because I don't want to jinx it or or put them in a put them in an odd place. So you guys keep following us. Um, like us. If you're not subscribed, do that. If you have friends that haven't subscribed to it, tell them about our show. And what I would do is send them a link to one of our player interviews. Send them a link to when we had Clay Hensley on, when we had Mike Stanton on. Those are great shows. Um, ben Verlander, Lance McCullers Jr. I mean, all the, I mean, Robert Robert Flores, Roflo from MLB Network. Just some great shows. And one of my favorite shows was when we did a crossover with the Locked On Rays when we faced them in the playoffs. So check that out. Again, I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. Thank y'all for tuning in. And once again, I want to say to my girls' basketball team, y'all made me so proud tonight. We're 6-0. and We're going to go next week 7-0. and Then 8, we're going to go 9-0. and We're going to hit that district championship tournament, and we're going to take it all the way. We're going to win the title this year, and I couldn't be prouder as a coach. Um, and just I couldn't be prouder to be a part of an awesome, awesome podcast um, here, you guys and you girls that listen to us, you are what makes the show great. We wouldn't be here without you. So thank you so much. Y'all have a good evening. Y'all be blessed. I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. For myself and Eric the Man Heisman and Locked on Astros Nation, we're your team every day. And as always, go Strokes.